Hello everyone and welcome back to another HMS product video, this time showcasing the Exit CAN Analyzer. And at first I would like to show you what happens if you start the CAN Analyzer with a USB to CAN already plugged in. So let's start the CAN Analyzer. And here you see the CAN Analyzer start up with the CAN channel 1 and the assigned controller, CAN channel 2, and the according controller and the LIN channel available. Already with some basic modules like receive, transmit, supplied, um, you can basically get started. So next would be what happens if you start the CAN analyzer without having a USB to CAN already plugged in. Now let's try this again, this time by starting the CAN analyzer without actually having a USB to CAN plugged in. First we start the CAN analyzer. And we are then presented with the following view. The analysis configuration and a trace module already attached. Now, if you want to add another bus, a CAN bus, for example, right click on the configuration, create bus, select the bus type, we choose CAN bus. OK, and you will be required to select one of the controllers of your attached devices. We will pick the USB to CAN and select CAN controller 1 and press OK. Now we add another bus, create bus. Once again, CAN because we have a two channel CAN USB to CAN interface. And you can see the other controller is already grayed out, so we select controller 2 and have the second controller added, second CAN bus. Now if you select properties of the CAN bus, you can select the protocol, either standard or extended or both identifiers, the error frames, whether an acknowledge is supposed to be sent, and the configuration high or low speed CAN and the detected bitrate either auto detect or you can select it yourself we select 250 as you can see both CAN channels can have different uh, bitrates selected now that we have configured the, the bus, we will actually add modules to it. We will add a transmit module to the CAN channel 1 and a receive module to the CAN channel 2. Here we open both windows. Receive window for CAN channel 2. You can also see it in the window header. And a transmit module or CAN channel 1. Here we can enter, manually enter a message with the identifier, a description, extended identifier and the actual data for example. Last entry is for uh, cyclic transmission. So message ID 1, we add some dummy data. It's just my default dummy data. We have limitless repeat and immediate repeat. We can switch this time to, for example, 1000 milliseconds repeat mode. And we insert a message and do another message, identifier 2, 5, 6, 7, 8 as data, and 100 milliseconds repeat time or cycle time. Now that we have set up the messages that we want to send, we start the communication in the main window, bring up the two windows again, transmit and receive. You can see here in the receive window that the communication has been switched to started as well as soon as we start the communication in the main window. Select 
message with the identifier one and we can send the message now by clicking the icon in front of it or using the transmit single message button on top. Alternatively, we can switch on cyclic transmission, as you can see here. And we can switch it on and off individually. As you can see here, message 2 has a shorter cycle time of 100 milliseconds versus 1000 milliseconds of message 1 and therefore appears far more often in the message receive window. Now switching over to the message receive window we can uh, jump down or scroll down and up, up looking at the received messages or we could look at the messages in an overwrite view where the values of the message are constantly being updated. Switching it on again and modifying the data on the fly for message 1. We can see that the value has actually changed in the receive window as shown in the override view as well as in the main scrolling view. Here you can see the change data in the scrolling view. We stopped it for that purpose. And once we're done, we can just stop the communication. And that's about it.